Welcome and good morning everyone on this cold morning. My car was a little bit icy again this morning. Um, I hope you've all had a good week and I know you're all going to be looking forward to the weekend just like, just like me. So let's start with our photos of the week. Mrs Edwards sent in this beautiful photo of Rillis in bloom. They really are quite spectacular and with proper care they can grow and bloom for decades. And one grower has actually claimed that his bulb has bloomed every year for 75 years. I've kept one going for four years, so I've got a little bit to go there, but that's a lovely photo. And look at the, look at the stamens there, the biologists. Um, Mrs. Edwards has also sent in a photo of the straws by Kingston Lacey that many of you will know well. Have we got that photo? There it is. That's lovely. Look at those leaves to walk through there, really nice. And tomorrow's gonna to be a nice day for a walk, I think. So Mrs. Chaplio has sent in a fantastic photo of a fledgling bald eagle looking annoyed at a black bear cub, which is actually sleeping in the tree in Alaska. She didn't actually take it herself, it's just cut, it's come runner up in the wildlife photographer of the year competition in the people's choice category. That's lovely. Look at that bear. And as I'm, I love teddy bears, I think that's a lovely photo. And look at that eagle there sitting, looking a little bit perturbed by the bear. So that's a lovely one. So thank you, Mrs. Chaplio. Thank you, Mrs. Edwards. So today is International Women in Science Day. And we're celebrating it as a school by asking our science leads which female scientist has inspired them. So we're going to start by going live, hopefully live, to the junior school and to see Mrs Brown. Are you there, Mrs Brown? I am. Good morning, everybody. So Mrs Holloway asked me to have a think about my uh, favourite female scientist, and it took me all of a minute to think of Jane Goodall. We um, refer to her a lot in June school and actually she's mine and Mrs. Pugh's favorite scientist. So Jane was a Bournemouth girl who had a dream and now at the age of 87 is still a very respected female scientist. At the age of 26, she traveled to Africa to work on a chimpanzee research project. She had no experience at all, but was determined to be of help so she read every book she could about African animals. And at first in Africa, the chimpanzees didn't trust her, but she persevered and she spent every day with them. Then one day when she was walking through the forest, she saw one of the chimpanzees foraging for food. She observed him choose a twig, bend it, strip off its leaves, stick it in a termite's nest and use it as a spoon. And this was the first time ever that our eight relatives had been observed making tools. So Jane shared her research, but she was discredited because she was a female. Again, she persevered and finally other scientists backed her up. And then in 1977, Jane knew that she needed to help tackle climate change and she formed the Jane Goodall Institute. She says that she sees the world a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. And if we all focus on improving our little piece of the jigsaw and everyone else around us does the same, then we can all make a difference. And we've based our eco club in junior school on this. We're introducing small changes, for example, new recycling bins, planting additional trees and in creating new habitats. And I'm going to leave you with my favorite quote from this amazing woman. What you do makes a difference and you have to decide what difference you want to make. So here's a video all about Jane. In 1960, a young British woman ventured into the forests of Africa to follow her childhood dream, to find a way to watch free wild animals living their own undisturbed lives. She left everything familiar behind and ended up giving the world a remarkable window into our closest living relatives. She was me. I wanted to come as close to understanding animals as I possibly could.
We are continuing our research at Gombe. It's the longest running study of any non-human animal. And we're using some exciting new technology to learn more about chimpanzee ranging patterns and the state of the forest. And this helps to inform decision makers on action to be taken to protect chimpanzees, their habitats, and the other creatures that live there. I flew in a small plane over Gombe National Park and I was absolutely horrified at what I saw. So quickly it seemed, the environment outside the National Park had been utterly destroyed. The trees had gone. The land was over-farmed and infertile. They were struggling to survive. And that's when I realized that unless we helped the people to improve their lives, there was no way we could even try to save the precious chimpanzees. This was when we started Take Care or Tukari, our community-centered conservation project. Everywhere I went, I met young people who seemed to have lost hope. They all said more or less the same thing. We feel like this because we think you've compromised our future. And so that led into our program for youth, Roots and Shoots. The main message of Roots and Shoots is that every one of us makes a difference every single day. The program has now become a movement that's in 100 countries around the world. One of the things that the Jane Goodall Institute does that I feel is really most important is to try and give people hope, to help people understand that every single day we live, we can make a difference. And together, with everybody making a difference, we can change the world. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. Yes, truly an amazing female scientist. So a good choice there. Our senior science leads are now going to tell you about the women scientists who have inspired them. So I find Lise Meitner uh, inspiring because not only did she achieve great things, but she had such challenges to get there. So she actually left school when she was 14. Her brothers were able to continue, but at the time it wasn't done for the girls to have later schooling. She taught herself until she could go to university, age 21. She achieved a doctorate, absolutely fantastic, but no one would employ her. So while she couldn't get research work, she actually worked as a secondary school physics teacher. Um, it wasn't until she was 34 that she was actually paid to do research work. Later on in her life, at age 47, she became the first female physics professor in the whole of Germany. And yet, age 58, 59, sorry, she actually ended up leaving Germany with no personal possessions due to the Nazi occupation. This is absolutely huge. Someone who's worked all their life and they left with nothing. When she got to um, Sweden, she actually ended up discovering nuclear fission with her research partner. She was never credited um, from Nobel Prize, but she did have an element named after her. So that's called mitonurium. Mit <laughs> um, so she had amazing achievements, but actually life wasn't always easy for her. And she worked so incredibly hard and was so incredibly passionate that she overcame those obstacles. And that's why I find her inspiring. Lisa Meitner was an Austrian physicist who worked on radioactivity and nuclear physics. She was part of the team that discovered nuclear fission, an achievement for which her colleague Otto Hahn was awarded the Nobel Prize. She's often mentioned as one of the most notable examples of women's scientific achievement being overlooked by the Nobel Committee. Meitner was born in November of 1878 into a Jewish family as the third of eight children. Her father, Philip Meitner, was one of the first Jewish lawyers in Austria. Meitner studied physics, and in 1905, she became the second woman to obtain a doctorate degree in physics from the University of Vienna. In those days, women weren't allowed to attend public schools, but through the support of her parents, Meitner was able to attend private institutions to gain her education. In 1926, she became the first woman in Germany to become a full professor in physics at the University of Berlin. While there, she oversaw the research program on nuclear physics. 
It was during this time that she discovered nuclear fission with her colleague Otto Hahn. Albert Einstein called her the German Marie Curie. In 1945, Otto Hahn was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Many people disagreed with it only being given to Hahn. Meitner had a large part in the discovery of nuclear fission and went unrecognized. In 1946, Meitner was invited to the United States to be honored by the Women's National Press Club and President Truman. She also spoke at Princeton, Harvard, and other major United States universities and received several honorary doctorate degrees. Meitner retired to Cambridge, England. She enjoyed doing part-time research and speaking at lectures on occasion. She passed away in 1968 and was buried in Bramley near her younger brother, Walt. Her gravestone reads, Lisa Meitner, a physicist that never lost her humanity. I've chosen Professor Christina Pagel, who is Director of Clinical Operations Research Unit at UCL. Um, her work uses mathematical modelling to look at healthcare outcomes, which can then be used to advise on best practice in places like hospitals. While her main focus is on improving outcomes for patients with congenital heart conditions, since 2020 she's also been a member of Independent SAGE, a group of scientists who are working together to provide independent scientific advice to the UK government on how to minimise deaths and support Britain's recovery from the COVID-19 crisis. I've chosen her because she's been a highly influential epidemiologist during the COVID-19 pandemic, and her work represents the interface between mathematical modelling, scientific literacy, medicine and public health. This field of science may not seem like the most exciting, but I wanted to highlight just how important this work is for keeping people safe and society running smoothly. Koru is a team of mathematicians and physicists who work to improve healthcare using operational research. OR is a way of using analytical methods to help make better decisions. Many organisations have OR at the centre of their decision making and planning. At Koru, we spend a lot of time listening to medical staff and decision makers in hospitals. We help with questions like, will I need extra staff tomorrow? And how many intensive care beds do we need next year? How are our operations going? We also listen to community staff and national policy makers. How can we improve our care for patients once they leave hospital? What's the most efficient way to give vaccines? And how can we plan for a new pandemic? At Koru, we use scientific, mathematical and statistical methods to answer these questions. But turning these answers into practical solutions is just as important. So we work with academic experts in organisational change on how we can implement our research We've also started embedding researchers in hospitals. You can find out more about our exciting work through Koru's website or simply get in touch. Okay, so the lady in science that I'd like to speak about is Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell. And she is famous because she discovered pulsars. And for those of you who do GCSE physics, you will know that Pulsars are incredibly fast rotating neutron stars. The neutron stars are the most dense objects in space other than black holes. Now, she discovered these in the 1960s, 1967. She was a, a graduate student at um, a university. Um, but think about the life she would have had building up to that. She did school science at a time when school science for girls was domestic science, when the question was, could you make a decent shepherd's pie? They weren't interested in science as we would call it now. And she fought through all of that and became the scientist who discovered one of the most dramatic things in space. Pulsars are incredible. They are rotating incredibly fast. They emit electromagnetic radiation which sweeps across space and occasionally it sweeps across planet Earth. Think of it a bit like a, a lighthouse that sweeps out light. And she discovered this by looking at things on a graph. That graph itself has become very famous, and uh, I'm sure Mr. Butcher will tell you that the, the front cover of the cover of the album um, Unknown Pleasures by Joy Division, released in 1979, has a picture of that graph on it. So she's a cultural icon in many, many ways. So why do I like her particularly? Well, because the pulsars are fascinating, because she discovered that, but also in the early 2000s, I can't remember exactly the date, I was lucky enough to hear her speak 
and she was funny and she was engaging, incredibly relevant to people even though they were considerably younger than her and clearly a real intellect, a real bright brain. She's now a Dane, richly deserved. She does this, she's on TED Talks and all sorts of things like that, but she's really worth looking up. Um, she's my woman of science. That bit of the sky due to go through the telescope beam at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, December the 21st, perishing cold. And I switched on the high speed recorder and it came blip, 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 blip. Clearly the same family, the same sort of stuff. And that was great, that was really sweet. It finally scotched the little green men hypothesis because it's highly unlikely there's two lots of little green men opposite sides of the universe, both deciding to signal to a rather inconspicuous planet Earth at the same time using a daft technique and a, a rather commonplace frequency. It has to be some new kind of star not seen before. And that then cleared the way for us publishing, going public. Martin Ryle called up the editor of Nature, John Maddox, and, and more or less said, we've got something interesting coming. Um, he didn't quite say hold the presses, but he nearly did. Now, the people here say that if they got three signals as exactly spaced as that, it would be very unusual. If they got four, it would be phenomenal. Well, they've had pulses as exactly spaced as that 24 hours of the day since November. Well, these signals that we're picking up are entirely new. Nothing like this has been seen in radio astronomy before. The excitement was because this was a totally unexpected, totally new kind of object, behaving in a way that astronomers had never expected, never dreamt of. So I'm actually a science teacher too, and my degree was in biology. At my university personal tutor, Dr. Davis, was an endocrinologist, specializing in insulin and diabetes. And he used to talk about Dorothy Hodgkin. Now, she read for a degree in chemistry at Somerville College, Oxford, 1928, which was quite unusual for a woman at this time. She then went to Cambridge University and worked on biological molecules, including sterols. And she held the first X-ray diffraction studies of an enzyme, which was actually pepsin. She then went back to Oxford and began taking X-ray photographs of insulin, as well as working on penicillin, which had just been isolated. In 1932, because of her work, she became the second woman to be elected to the Royal Society. And in the mid 1950s, she discovered the structure of vitamin B12. And having been nominated more than once for a Nobel Prize, she actually was awarded it in 1964 for her work on penicillin and vitamin B12. And the following year, she was made a member of the Order of Merit in recognition of her contribution to science. So another amazing female scientist. Now it is time for notices. I'd just like to update you on the swim to Wimbledon. We're actually aiming for 168 kilometers. And at the halfway point, we've done 43. And that's without the step count or the swim academy added in. And Mrs. Camp would like to remind everyone that there's a cake sale at break today. Mrs. Pugh, have you got any notices you'd like to share with us all? I have, Mrs. Stone. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. And I know today that senior school are in Mufti and they're having their cake sale today. Um, to support the tennis charity, but junior school and pre-prep 
we are having our Mufti Day and our cake sale next Friday. So Friday the um, 18th, I believe, just before half term. So I know, uh, so although seniors are having theirs today, we're going to do ours next week. Um, that's the main notice um, this morning, Mrs Stone from Junior and Pre-Prep. Um, so thank you. And, and thank you to the science teachers for telling us about their heroines. That was very interesting. Thank you. So over to Reverend Burke. Reverend Burke, are you there? And indeed, good morning, everybody. And we pray, we thank God for the amazing contribution made by women scientists, using their intelligence and skill to change the world for good. Inspire us in our science studies, thanking you for our teachers and all who encourage us. Together, we can change the world for good. We ask this in the name of a loving creator God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Burr. Thank you, all the science teachers that have um, helped with the assembly. I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Weather looks good tomorrow, so perhaps a walk is a good idea. Why not try to take a photo, send it in for next week's photo of the week? Sunday actually looks a little wet. So have a great Friday and see you all next week. Bye. Bye.